and George. Okay, cool. So it's all working. Sandra. Hi, Juan. How are you? <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so excited to have this conversation right now. Yeah, I must say I am too. You know, I've... I, we've only done one um, event in New York and that was a long time ago. So when you uh, contacted me and said, do you want to come to New York? I'm like, of course I want to come to New York. I love New York. <laughs> so it's, it's really funny. So I'll give you guys a little bit of background and, and Sandra will tell her story here in a minute. I uh, watched the video that my brother was at your event that Marcy had put on and when I watched it, so the first time I watched it, I was kind of in bed. I didn't know what to expect, right? So like I'm in bed, I have the video on my phone. I'm kind of like leaning over like this, you know? And then you do your first, uh, your first session and I don't remember the girl's name. Uh, I think we posted it in the group, the, the, the shorter the girl. Yeah, the correction. Yeah, the correction. And I, I'm sitting there, I'm like, wait, what, what, what just happened? <laughs> like it was just <laughs> so, so blew my mind about what you're able to do for human beings at levels that I've just never seen. And I've worked with some pretty amazing people. Um, so yeah, as soon as, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my God, I would love to put on this event uh, originally at my house, but now we're doing it in New York city, which is even cooler. Um, but yeah, before we dive into all that stuff in the live event and what we're doing, I'd love for you just to share a little bit about who you are, your story. So people that have no idea who you are can get a little bit of sense. Yeah, that probably makes sense too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, it was very interesting for me Look, as a three year old, I had, uh, Jesus and these divine beings speaking to me every night. And I remember going to my mom at about age four and saying, mommy, you know, what does Jesus talk to you about when you go to bed at night? And of course that we weren't brought up in a religious home and that name was never heard of. And so she's thinking, well, hang on, where the hell is this coming from? And she deflected it really well and said, um, uh, what does he talk to you about? So that was the, that was like, Oh, this is, this is what's going on. And, um, you know, because we weren't a religious or spiritual family at that stage, I it kind of just, as a child, you have these connect, everybody has these connections mm -hmm. and um, they just kind of went by the wayside. And then at 18, I was rushed to hospital and I almost died. So I had this near death experience. Like I was so close to death that when the surgeon came in and said, oh, wow, I don't really want to have to cut up open your stomach and I, I sat there with a smile on my face and said well, I lie there and I'm going don't I am absolutely happy and I knew where I was I was like I was in a place of peace that I had never experienced before the love that I felt I was like ev all life was love I, I actually dropped into reality at that stage and I had an awareness that everything around me was one like there was a unity to all life and um, it was really interesting because that unity that I'm talking about now I was every other patient in the hotel in the hotel in the <laughs> hospital um, yeah not quite a hotel yeah and Different kind. I was one with the nurses, the doctors, my auntie and my mum my mum was crying in the hallway but I was her crying and I was all and everything. So I had this complete, uh, what I learned later was an, a complete enlightenment experience. But dropping into reality is how I see it. Like so everything that was not that experience was an illusion. So I, right before I, I was about to die, I've gone fantastic. My life is complete that I have now experienced this and I'm ready to go. So when I woke up out of that surgery in a trashed out painful body, I was so upset. I'm going, no, this is not right. I am not meant to be here. And, and although I had had those experiences um, of being connected when I was three, wow, like when I woke up, I just, it was like or something happened to me when I was in that coma, something happened to me when I almost died. And um, it was like I was given this spiritual hacking, almost an upgrade. Wow. And um, I knew things, I just I just knew things, and I knew things I didn't want to know. Um, like I knew that my mother was going to die, and I begged her not to go to hospital. And two months later, my beautiful 41-year-old mother had a very successful hysterectomy, but she was given 18 pints of the wrong blood group, and she bled out and died after that surgery. 
So, I, you know, this was called Nightmare 101 because I knew that that was meant to be me, not her. And um, so that was a really interesting time. Just hang on a tick. That could be my husband at the door. Hang on. Yeah, yep. Daniel, is that you? Yeah. Hey, Adam, Natalia, Adam, Renee. We got two Adams here. Christine. <laughs> After this. Oh, thank you, darling. Yeah, Daniel's just walked in, which is such a treat. I'd love yeah. him to poke his head in and say hello, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Hey, wonderful to connect with you. You too. I am so looking forward to meeting you in person. Same, absolutely. Are you, are you at an event or speaking at an event? I, I am attending an event. I'm getting hegemicated. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. Always good. Yeah. I'm he's at the Coindesk crypto. <laughs> what, yeah. what's, what's the event called? It's uh, the Coindesk um, Consensus. It's a, a blockchain and crypto convention. Wow. I'm, I'm just here with, with 8,500 of my closest friends. Very nice. It sounds very, very private and intimate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit intense, yeah. as you can <laughs> imagine. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, I actually, we just spoke to a team yesterday um, that are starting kind of like a, it's called Unify. They're starting a, an education system on, on financial, like university financial, basically. But one of their things is a lot in the crypto space because yes. obviously it's something that everyone wants to learn about and, and know more about. So um, yeah, it's, it's a fast growing buzz my my uh, seventy one year old beloved is becoming a crypto nerd. <laughs> I love. It. I'm, the, I'm the least nerdy, geeky person you'll ever meet. And by the way, he's the oldest too, right? <laughs> In this convention, they're all they all look like you, not him. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. Hey, I well, love it. You guys, get back to it. It's wonderful to meet you. You too. Um, um, we'll see you Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Awesome. See you yes. soon. Enjoy the conference. Thank you. Yeah, so um, that was fun. Yeah, what, what a nice surprise. <laughs> I know, I wasn't expecting that. It was great. Um, about two, darling. And so, um, yeah, getting back to, you know, like knowing that my mum died, I, what happened for me was that I left formal education immediately and went in to help run my um, my parents' fashion business. And within two years, I had... Um, kind of mastered the art of running these fashion shops, but I had also sold them for them. I went through another life-threatening surgery and at the age of 20, I married a man 10 years older than me who was the head controller of women's fashion target. And at 20, I got fired from the shops that I had sold for my dad. <laughs> and um, so I opened my first fashion boutique and um, that, yeah, that was really sensational. And uh, for me, as a 20-year-old, just being able to step into my own business and, um, and having, the men having the business mentorship of not only my husband at that time, but also all of the people who owned and ran Can you imagine being a young girl and having those mentors? It was when I, I really learnt the importance of mentorship, which I know you know, Alain. Yeah. That mentorship is one of the most important things that we can have. Um, but, you know, by the age of 27, I very courageously extracted myself from what had become an abusive marriage. And um, I left him with everything, all the boutiques, bar one, the, the buildings we had bought, everything, our home, the animals, everything. And I started from scratch. And, you know, it was a really tough time and I knew that I had to find the tools. I knew I had to do something that was going to help me not only survive but thrive in what was my rapidly changing world at that time. And, and I know there's a lot of people out there who go through these things and it's like you're here and you're going, well, hang on, this is a whole new world. What do I do? But, you know, Ilan, I was so lucky because um, I discovered meditation uh, <laughs> and, uh. yeah, and I found a spiritual mentor who was phenomenal. And uh, I, I mastered, I began to master the art. Oh, 
that <laughs> because I'll never forget going into one of my businesses and my staff saying to me, you know, Sandra, we never know what we're going to get with you. Are you going to be angry, sad, unhappy, a bitch? What, like what? And I was like, wow, this was like a light going on. And um, I thought to myself, gee, I could actually complain here and I could, I could uh, justify my behaviour by saying, listen, I'm, I'm coping with the end of the marriage, failing health. Seven people in our town had committed suicide because our whole town was going through a huge financial crisis. But instead, because this is the one of the things that we teach, and that is instead I took radical personal responsibility. Yes. Right? So it was nobody else was, this was me. And I walk into my store and my, my staff didn't want me there. And, um, and by the way, I didn't want to be there either. So what <laughs> I, oh, <laughs> well, so every morning before I would go into my businesses, and by the way, I really want everybody to hear this because I have taught thousands of people around the world this and um, they've used it to improve their businesses and their own beingness. Because remember what Neil Donald Walsh said. He said that when it's time to leave your body, your soul doesn't care about what you've been doing. It only cares about who you have been, who you have been being whilst you've been doing what you've been doing. Yep. So this is about changing our frequency to be the best version of who we are. I got in my every, in every morning. I, got, I was sat in my car before going into the boutiques. I would take a few deep breaths and centre myself, and I would ask myself four questions. And the first one was, "What am I feeling?" And I'm going, I, "I I'm feeling like I do not want to go into that business right now." And then the second question is, "What am I focused on?" And I realised that I was focused on how unhappy I was about going in there and having my suppliers ring me almost on the, on the half hour asking me for money that I didn't have. Mm. And, you know, in front of my staff, clients, everybody, it was just, it was not the ideal situation for success. And then, so then I asked myself the third question, well, what do I want to feel? And that was easy. I want to feel happy about going to work. Yeah. And fourth question, which was the big one, because the fourth question is what got me to neutral around the emotions and it had my frequency so high that when I walked into the boutiques, my staff wanted me there again. My clients wanted to come in and even if they didn't want to uh, me to dress them, they wanted to be in, they would say, can we just be in the energy? I ended up putting couch in all of my boutiques so women could come in and have tea, coffee, champagne, just so they could sit with me at that stage. So the answer to the fourth question was what do I, you know, what am I focused on? What do I need to feel to, to change my frequency? And that was, wow, I need to feel gratitude and love for what I have already created for the staff, for my clients and for the suppliers who were ringing me for money that I didn't have. Mm. That turned everything around to such a degree that, honestly, Alan, three years later, I was a self-made millionaire. And that was by changing the frequency, loving what I had, grateful for what I had. And obviously, I continued to work on myself on a very, very deep spiritual level. But if I could teach everybody those four questions and get to that place, I know I've, I've accomplished something great for people. So I guess that, you know, from then on, it was 25 years creating a chain of businesses with my own label. And then I, I wrote a couple of books and put on a huge healing uh, mind, body, spirit festival in my town. And all the time I was writing for spiritual magazines and um, I was a keynote speaker in Australia and New Zealand for their big mind, body, spirit festivals there. So that was all underlying what I was doing. I never, ever, once you have tasted enlightenment, you cannot go back. <laughs> so that was, that was, for me, it was my passion. It was the one overriding thing that even during, even becoming this business person, it didn't matter. And quite frankly, I think that that's why my business thrived, was because I had that underpinning of that that spiritual knowledge and um because truly love is the secret to success yeah love and is the secret to everything that's exactly right you what, what's the question that's the answer love yeah. right? and um so that was really interesting and then i met daniel and uh he asked me to marry him on our first date 
and on the second date we agreed that we would be married as of that moment and within three weeks all of my businesses my house my car my cat my family my boyfriend all of that was gone and I left us left my country I left Australia and moved to New Zealand and um, for, for 15 years there we built a spiritual retreat that was um, really built on a power place of unconditional love um, in its day job it was a hotel and it won the world's best luxury coastal hotel in 2010 and yeah you guys you have to look this up it's Congratulations. well you know one of the reasons being apart from the design being just beautiful but um, it was built to spiritual specifications <laughs> so it, you know when you build something on a sacred site in a sacred manner we we guidance and instructions to the T and and that I believe again is the reason why it was uh, recognized throughout the world as one of the best and then five years ago my spiritual mentor said to me oh you're leaving I'm going where are we leaving <laughs> and she says <laughs> I didn't know in New Zealand you're going to America I'm going oh no 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 and she goes yes Los Angeles and I'm going absolutely not no <laughs> and she said oh yeah that's where you're going and um she reeled off what was going to happen and, uh, you know, again, then leaving the country that I'd been in for 15 years but was so close to home. And Daniel is an American. You might have heard that. Yeah. And we landed in L.A. And honestly, Ilan, two weeks later, we met Mr. Jack Canfield, who is responsible for selling over half a billion books in the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And he sat with us and after five minutes, he just put his pen and paper down and he looked at me and he went, and Daniel said, I know you, I want to work with you, come on. And that was five years ago. And since then, um, we've been his spiritual mentors, his coaches. He's had us work with all of his family, all of his staff. All of last year, I worked with his entire staff. And um, he just said we quantum leaped his business. And quite frankly, he would tell you this if he was here now, that um, if it weren't for the work that I did with him and Patty, um, which is his business partner, they would have split up about three or four years ago. And honestly, they have affected millions of people's lives since then. And uh, so I feel like uh, for me, the work that I do, Alan, it's about working with people like you and your brother and Marcy and all of these leaders in your, in your um, genre, leaders in your field, who are going out there and you're impacting and helping to change lives. Like that's our purpose for being, right? Yeah. But when I help to get you clear, when I help to get Marcy clear, when I help to get Jack and Patty clear, then they go out, they're this demonstrated action of what clarity is, of what living a life without your unconscious programs running your business. And that means that they, I get to millions more people yes. because I've helped get these people to the next level of success. Yeah. And that's, that's the um, aim of the game. That's the end game for me, really. Yeah. Uh, Daniel and I now have uh, dedicated the last third, maybe quarter of our lives. Um, and my mentor said to me, I will be working till the day I die. So there it is. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so, that, so we've, we're just dedicated. Our mission is to help set people free so that they can be the best version of who they are so we can have a very, very different world. Amazing. So... There are many people that can say, I mean, we work with people who are thought leaders and, and impact, uh, you know, Marcy works with those people, et cetera. Um, the work that you do uh, with Daniel is incredibly unique. Yes. And is. you have gifts that have come online, you know, probably that, you know, started through your near death experience and you've cultivated through many, many practices of your own. Yes. I would love for you to share a little bit about how you approach clearing people and, and doing that work because that is truly, truly unique. Yeah, it, it is unique, Alan, and I feel very blessed to um, have this gift. Mind, I say that and I've spent 40 years dedicated to yeah. 
you know, really getting this gift um, to a point where um, I am 100% certain that the results are 100% correct, that what I'm telling people is the absolute truth. And the clarity of the clearing is like nothing I've ever experienced either. So what happens for me is that when I work with you, with, with anyone, and in a group setting like we are Thursday night, I am not interested in the conscious mind at all. I'm only interested in what's happening in the unconscious because what's happening in, in the unconscious are the blocks to the freedom and they're locked into our DNA. Now they've come from our ancestors, they've come from our own imprinting, from childhood and conditioning, and we have brought them in with us. So you know when people say, oh babies, they're so innocent, and I'm going, not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're clear, they're, they're, they're not clear, they're, they're beautiful and I love them and, but I look at them and I know I can tell by their behaviour and anyone who has children knows this to be a fact that from a very young age they start manipulating you, they start wanting what they want, they start developing their own personality and you think, well, where, do, where has that come from? And so they've brought this personality that this evolution of their soul is, is like this is a continual exciting experience for us whilst we're living in the illusion of this world, right? Mm. Which is obviously, by the way, not the aim of the game. The aim of the game is to be complete and to get back to reality. But whilst we're here and whilst we are living in this illusory world, um, we keep coming back doing the same things over and over again until we don't, until we're clear of them. And the way we get clear is by, you know, working with someone like me and Daniel who has this ability to go into the unconscious and to discover what that is. Now, when you or whoever I'm talking to works with me, I am continually um, testing the per person to see if they're staying weak or strong. Now, I can teach this to people, by the way, which is so exciting, and we will be teaching people, we will have a program to teach people this. But So if you stay strong, then you go weak when you're talking to me, that's when I get excited. That's when the fun starts. And that's the great time. Because even though the ego mind doesn't want to think that you're weak, it's not that weak. What, what that's doing is it's your whole beingness is saying, yes, you've discovered the program. Mm. So that, that's the exciting part. So when you go weak, then I discover where it's come from. Is it coming from spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, psychic or psychological levels? One or a combination on sometimes all of them. And uh, if it's come from a spiritual level, by the way, this is um, where I will always start first because when we clear the spiritual level, then all of the others like dominoes seem to fall over. Mm. And yeah, so um, I then go in and I just wait. I wait for your true self or the person I'm working with, their true self, to actually show me what. I need to know to be able to clear the emotional charge around what you're going through so you are free and clear of that block. And this will often, it used to happen for me, um, first of all, it used to happen for me, I would, um, when I was in a group, I'd put a sheet down on the floor, a white sheet, and I'd look down and there were neon lights on the, on the floor like a movie. And so there it was, I would just see the movie happening on the floor. Wow. And that would be cumbersome. And then, um, I can't remember, all other things started to happen. But then now, now this iteration of the work is that I simply have your past life or your true self appear before me, that my spirit eyes see, and I see everything about you and the person I'm working or the person I'm working with. I'm, I see what the lifetime was, what the event, emotion and decision was, and then I go in and neutralise and delete all of the programs associated with the event and the emotion is no longer there. And when you cannot find the emotion, it's like the event didn't even happen. So we're going to, on Thursday night, we're going to collapse. It's a very experiential night, which is going to be fun for everybody. It's not just Daniel and I teaching. We'll give you a bit of background. But um, we're going to take you all into a meditation where you will collapse time on a quantum level. And you'll go back and you'll discover the event emotion and decision where you were like oh so that's why I'm I don't feel peace around this oh so that's what so that's what's going on we'll get you to do a self-assessment 
what we found is interesting at Marcy's evening was that we got people to do the self-assessment on what they felt like zero to 10 for peace. And a lot of people uh, had themselves pretty high for peace, which on a conscious level they were. When we did this exercise, I asked them to re, you know, score themselves. And it was like much, much that we're not as peaceful, as loving, as aware or trusting or whatever as we thought we were. Yeah. Yeah. But then once I start doing those corrections and we'll have a few people up the front on Thursday night, um, everybody in the room gets the corrections because you have a think about this, the unconscious mind of all of us. For a start, there is only one mind, one soul that's on a, on a quantum physics reality, that's the reality. So when I speak to you, I'm speaking to everyone. When I'm correcting one person, the DNA and the information center of everybody's going, oh, that's me, that's my correction, right? It's applying it to itself. It's like the good news and the bad news about judgments. You know, like when you judge somebody, um, the, actually there is no good news about judging somebody. The fact is that you, when you judge somebody, you're unconscious applies that exact judgment to yourself. yourself. Yep. Oh yeah. So can you imagine how many unconscious programs and blocks we've all got? It's like Daniel and I put our hand up every day and go, uh, can you just clear me about that? The minute we feel any fear, negativity or pain, or we just feel a little bit of out of balance, we know we've got an unconscious program running and it's time to clear it out. So this is just a clearing process. It works, it works immediately. It's fast, it's effective, and people can count on it. You know, my yeah. private clients just, um, their whole lives change and their businesses go through the roof. They start to make more money. They're happier in their success. Isn't that what we want? To you know, what's, what I love is, A, I love that you call it clearing. Um, yeah. B, there's just something, you know, I think every entrepreneur, especially, I, I think entrepreneurs feel this more, we all in essence are on a journey. Yes. Everything that we want is right here. The only thing standing in the way is us. That's and it. <laughs> a lot of the times people, I just funny. I just interviewed this brilliant woman, uh, Brianna. And when we first start, the answer is always, okay, I'm unhappy or you don't even know sometimes why you're unhappy or unfulfilled or whatever the feeling. And it's, mm -hmm. I'm going to run and, and get this. So I'm going to go get the job that everyone thinks I need to get. I'm going to, okay, that didn't make me happy. Then the, the house, then the car, then the husband or wife, then the kids, then the, and it just goes on and on and on until eventually you get to this point and you're like, I'm still not happy. I'm still not satisfied. I got all the things that everyone told me I should get and I'm still not satisfied. And it's, then when a lot of people start to do this kind of deep internal work because they've realized the external world isn't really helping me. And mm -hmm. what I love that the work that you guys do, and at least that I saw, I haven't fully experienced it myself, but what I saw is, and why I'm so excited to, that you guys are here in New York, you're able to cut through all of that stuff and yeah. communicate with, you know, over soul or super conscious version of us mm -hmm. where that's communicating to you like, Hey, this is a block and this is a block and this is a block. Like you did this, uh, you did something with my brother, which, you know, we've worked with healers and, and, and uh, astrological readings and things like that, where everyone's kind of told them a very similar story. You know, at some point he was um, a leader of, of some, spiritual movement, you know, some, something with having to do with God, something went bad and um, you, you were ousted or something happened. So there was always this thing there, but like, as soon as you started speaking to guy, it's like, okay, you're the leader of this Islamic tribe. You're preaching to this enormous community. Someone crusaders come in, kill everyone in front of your eyes. And all of a sudden I can just see, the reality set in and the stories of like, if I'm out there, people die, people that I love die. And, and mm -hmm. it just, you know, knowing him for so many years and the blockages that's had in his intimate love life, um, things that, that he's experienced in our business, 
the second that happened and the second it was released, like he came back a different human being. Yeah. And it wasn't the story. Like the story was great. That was the icing on the cake. It's just the work that you did it is it's at such a subconscious spiritual level that physically you don't even need to be there for it to work. It's just, it's working. And it's, it, I literally never seen anything like it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I'm so glad that you said it, it wasn't the story. Look, the story isn't important. I get the story. So I figured that if I get it and people want to hear it, then I'll give it to them. Sure. But the story makes sense of why people are doing what they're doing. And truly you can go to a million different coaches and people if they're working on the unconscious, if they're working on the conscious mind, you'll never ever get to um, a place of completeness or clarity around what it is. In fact, you just it just will always be there until the next time, until you find yeah. it. That's why this work is so profound and so powerful and quite frankly, Alan, so necessary. I mean, Daniel and I could be doing anything at 65 and 71. We could be sitting on a beach somewhere having fun just doing <laughs> but really, we couldn't yeah. because we, can't, we have to get to and clear as many leaders and entrepreneurs as possible because people don't, you can't solve a seemingly unsolvable problem if you don't know where it is and you don't know how to clear it, if you don't know the exact words. See, Russian scientists have discovered, and this is what I love, all of my work is backed up by uh, physics and science. And Russian scientists discovered a long time ago that what Western science called uh, 90% of the brain was like, what's that for? Nothing. It's like junk brain. I'm going, junk brain, really? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think so. And they discovered that our DNA uh, reacts to a particular language and light, so light frequency. So when you're on that frequency with that language, everything reacts to what I'm saying and doing and the frequency that we're on. And that's one of the big tricks, like being on that frequency with these specific words and the DNA goes, Oh, and it just releases it. And it's no longer there. And I I was absolutely certain with, um, with Guy that he was going to have a different way of being because we took out something where his frequency was, his whole frequency was saying, um, no, I'm, I can't lead. I can't, it's dangerous. Stay away from me. It's da- danger, danger, danger. Don't believe me. Don't listen to me. Don't like, he's a leader. And can you imagine? That's the perfect example of what people are going through. I say that what happens is that we all have a glass ceiling. Like guy was able to get to a certain level of success, but because of that unconscious program and all of the associated programs running with it, he was never going to be able to be the success he can be now. Now, I'm not saying he's totally clear. I mean, obviously, I would love you guys to be private clients so I could actually get yeah. you to that point. But the fact is that even in that small amount of time, massive shifts happen. Yeah. And it just just to put this in perspective and, and something that I want you to touch on after after I share this you know, that happened in a past life. That was ancestral stuff that Sandra was able to just see. By the way, guys, this all happened in under 10 minutes. This wasn't this drawn out, you know, three hours. It was literally 10 minutes and he got one of the biggest breakthroughs of his life. But just, I find it to be so interesting, right? So souls keep coming over and over to live different lives, right? One soul. That's right. One our soul. Our soul. Like we just keep having, you know, different, yes. different physical embodiments of the soul. Yeah. So yeah. How perfect that guy should come into this life, into another body, and really, in essence, repeat and replicate a, mm-hmm. another version of a life where we're leaders, people follow us. He's yep. sharing messages about God and spirituality. So mm-hmm. now he has to go through this whole thing that he has no idea why he has such angst about saying the word God. Yeah. Like even that for him through this transformation has been really, really huge, oh. actually for both of us. Yeah. And then like, so you make this big mission. Okay, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be a revolutionary. I'm going to change the world. Meanwhile, this ancestral program of, wait, but if I were to actually fulfill on it, everyone that follows me dies. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's it's running the show. And guess what? The ego mind, the ego mind is saying to him all of the time, don't go there, don't go there, don't yeah. go there. The ego mind is always going to be create. See, he, was, he would not have had any form of peace around this whatsoever. And that's why Daniel and I created the uh, Platinum Life System, by the way, because using the platinum life system, we had, to, we had to come up with a system that was going to be really easy for people to use to get themselves back into that place and almost do an ego mind override, right? So that if you, if you override the ego mind, all of a sudden your true self and the divine mind is in charge and those blocks start to melt away as well. And we'll go through that platinum life system with everyone on Thursday. But, you know, like Jack's so cute. I wish he was here now because he would, he'd be on telling you. Yeah, he would. <laughs> yeah, he does because he just does. He loves to share this work. Yeah. And he said, uh, he says to everybody, you know what she did? He said, Patty and I, every time Patty came to me with another project, I would look at her and I'd go into this shocking place and I'd say, you're trying to kill me. And he said he actually meant it. He felt every time she came with another project. And, of course, she's wanting the whole business to be successful and him to be successful and this young girl can't work out why this man thinks she's trying. Anyway, we, we went in there and they were married. And she, Jack was the woman and Patty was the husband. Wow. I'm, I'm telling you this, by the way, because I do not tell people what happens with my clients, except Jack has told the whole world this story. So that has given me permission to do that. <laughs> and um, she was the woman and he, she, she had baby after baby. And on the last one, she's actually bleeding to death, dying, having this baby. And she's looking wow. at her husband and going, you are killing me. And she's blaming her husband, which was Patty. And so in this lifetime... What happened was every time Patty brought him another project, it was like this new baby, this new thing to do. He would just go into this shocking place. And as soon as I cleared that out for them, oh, yeah, Patty, what have you got for us to do next? What's the next project? Like their, their business took a quantum leap. And he was so much happier. And of course she was because she's going, well, yeah, of course I've got, I mean, these two people are geniuses in their own right. And, um, but you see, even geniuses in their own right who are the most successful in their field um, then they're still being run by their unconscious the unconscious is running our business it doesn't matter who you are this is the normal human condition mm. so good so is there anything else that you can share to give people an idea of the experience of this so do people come to you and say hey this is my block or this is the area of life that, that I'm stuck in. Yeah. Is it like that? Cause you know, that's how most coaches work. I, I, from what I've seen, you, you approach things very, very differently. Yeah. Well, are you actually don't need to tell me anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I get it. The minute you sit that's down, what I'm getting I, at. <laughs> I've got you, I've got you the minute you sit down. And, um, but it's really important that, that the people that I work with tell me, what the area is that they want to work on and what it is that they're feeling uncomfortable. Like on Thursday, when I ask people who would like to come up the front, I would expect that they would come up and say, I'm feeling uncomfortable about this, or this is happening for me, or this is not happening for me, just to give me an, an opening and an entree into what it is that they, that they want to have cleared in that moment. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting because I don't do this. Like I shut down this uh, work when I'm not working with somebody. So I, when nobody has to be worried. When we walk in the room on Thursday, we're not going to be reading all of you and knowing your deepest secrets. We promise That'd you. That'd be a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah, we promise you. Yeah, my, my third dimensional brain would not be able to cope with that. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, my true self is laughing at me now. It's like, you know, <laughs> you're okay. I got it. All right. So, you know, sometimes I just get slapped around if I yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, so the connections that I have are just so beautiful, but they're so profound. You know, the last time I had this upgrade um, was uh, about just before I met Daniel and truly it took four whole days with two days beforehand with me shaking in absolute pain, um, head bursting. I was giving people healing at a mind, body, spirit festival in, with 10,000 people around me and people were dropping at my feet, sobbing. They were holding me. They were going into instant past life regression. The man at the coffee machine is doing this. Go away, find another route to the restroom. I didn't come here for this. Wow. I mean, people were going through all around me 
wherever I was, because these divine beings were in there upgrading me, everybody could feel it. And so um, thank God I haven't had to, I mean, I've only gone through a few of those and luckily I wasn't dying, which was, was an improvement. <laughs> it was an improvement, right? But um, I obviously, I agreed to come here in this body, in this moment, to go through whatever it took to bring in these divine beings. And they're called the ancients. They, they say that they're the first energy from God and that they are like this column. And people, uh, clairvoyants who see me go, do you know what you're doing? Do you know who you are? Do you know what's happening? And I go, yeah, I have an idea. Um, and uh, it's so interesting because, you know, for people like, like us, like actually not for people like us, for all human beings, we can only ever bring through more of who we are. Mm. So the more you focus on the God of your understanding, the more you change your frequency, the clearer you get, the more complete you become. And that's complete with this karmic wheel of, of you know, having to come back to learn those lessons. The more complete you become, the more frequency you have, the more you are bringing in more of who you are, more divinity, more love, more perfection. Because for me, Alana, I mean, I look at you. I mean, I look at By the way, I can't keep my eyes off your, your aura. I mean, <laughs> um, a beautiful aura happening there. Um, when I look at anyone, like everyone, I only see the perfection of who you are. Mm -hmm. I just see you as a perfect divine being. It just so happens I also see the unconscious blocks that are stopping you from living that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's what's so important about this work. I, am, I just feel very grateful that you said come to new york and do this because um i i can hardly wait to get my arms around and yes, my heart <laughs> people on thursday night uh it's so beautiful there's a mentor of mine when i first first started in personal development uh and you just remind me of a story of his he had this ability different than yours but someone could open their mouth say two sentences and he knew exactly the question to ask or where to steer them. Like I saw him one time get up, you know, someone stood up, said something about they're struggling at work and this and that, whatever. And he goes out of left field. He's like, so tell me about your mom. And the person literally instantly starts crying. Like didn't yeah. even say a word, just starts crying. And I've seen this happen time and time again. So I remember saying, walking up to him going, you know, how do you do that? Like what, what is it that you do? And he said, imagine a carpet. Now, if you walk into a room and the carpet's dirty and someone puts another dirt on it, it doesn't make, it doesn't make a difference. But if your carpet is squeaky clean white, any drop that shows up on there will, will show itself to me. And he's like, that's, that's what it occurs like to me. It's like a, this, this white platform that then stuff sticks to. So as you were sharing the story about how you see the perfection and then you get to see these blockages. Like you have a gift to just be able to tune in and see things in a 5D world that yes. most people, I mean, most people don't even understand it exists, let alone have access. Well, well that's the thing, you know, physicists are now saying, yes, this exists. Yes. And it's like tapping into this zero point field, which um, Lynn McTaggart talks about in her book, The Field. Get the book. It's fabulous. Awesome. The field and um so she's she actually explains how i do what i do and dr valerie hunt um in infinite mind another book and she explains how i can do what i can do but you know what i honestly believe that all humans can do this um, it's just the the diligence it's the it's the one not all human beings are here to do this by the way yeah for sure we're all on a different level we're all on a different way of being but i know for a fact it's time for us all to come home to God, to our heart, to love. And you can't do that if you've got things inside of you going, no, 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 danger, danger, danger. Yeah. There's something really beautiful about, uh, A, just I honor that the fact that we get to have you here in New York City and, and share this gift with us. Um, and for all of you that are listening, that are in the New York area, um, we have a very small room, so please, please, please reach out. Let us know that you'll be there so we can put you on the list. Um, 
I promise you, if you're in any form of spiritual development, personal development, working on yourself, on your relationships in any way, shape or form, this is going to be one of the most life changing uh, experiences you'll probably ever be able to attend. So I'm super, super excited to meet you and finally put my arms around you and Daniel yes. and um, yes. just excited to, to, to see what this night holds and the kind of light that we get to share in the world. Oh, I, I'm just very excited. I'm looking at your aura and you've got this pale blue and white just kind of emanating out of you. And when you started talking about talking just then and got excited, it was like, it was like <laughs> I go, <"Okay>, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I'm so look, Alain, looking forward to meeting you, but also to everyone who is on this call and who's going to watch this. Um, you know, I know it sounds weird when a total stranger says, I love you, mm. but the truth is I, I do love you and, um, and I don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you see everyone as a perfect divine being, it's, it, it makes love much, much easier. That's right. And just think that you are in the unity platinum, the you in platinum is unity. And that's the oneness of all life. So when I'm looking at you, I'm only looking at the divine gorgeous being that I am. So I, you know, I do, of course I love you because the more, and the more you get to love yourself, the more you are capable of loving others. Oh, it's so funny. I, um, you know, children have this way where you, and parents do this too with their children. I love you. I love you more. I love you more. I love you more. I love you more. And one of the things that I've, I've practiced with my children is to really embody that, that they get to love themselves first yes. and most. Yeah. And then in, in that, they actually get to emit that love. It's like the cup gets to be filled and then it gets to Absolutely. spill over. You're, so you're putting them on the love frequency. Yeah. Demonstrating what love is. You know, and, and that's the thing that a lot of teachers don't realize. You, a lot of teachers teach what they need to learn, which is exactly right. That's exactly what we, we do. We teach what we need to learn and what we want, to, what our passion is. But the fact is you have to be the perfect demonstrated action of what you are teaching. Like you have to be, you, your, your frequency and what you're teaching has to line up. Because mm -hmm. we know the conscious mind and the unconscious mind don't line up. Sure. That's my job to get them to line up, right? Yeah. But in our work, who we are has to line up with what we're saying and what we're teaching. And that's why it's important to get clear. And that's why for parents, you know, you can't say one thing and do another with a child. You have got to be very, very consistent. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I'll use Jack this last before I go. I'm just going to say that um, because I've spent so much time with Jack, um, there's one thing that I really, I mean, it's a lot of things I admire about him, but the thing I admire the most is that when you meet this man in his, um, I was going to say bedroom then, but that wasn't going to sound right. When you meet <laughs> this man in his dining room or his home and then you see him on stage, it's exactly the same person. There's no difference from the one talking to you in his home to the one talking to you on the stage. Oh. And you'll see that on uh, Thursday night. What you're getting here is exactly what you get uh, when we're working with you. And that's what that's the consistency that people can, um, they can trust you know, there's a level of trust that you can have when you know that your teacher isn't saying one thing and doing another. Which I have to say in our space of thought leaders and, you know, people in the spiritual world um, <laughs> is rarer than one would think. I've been backstages and it's, it's shocking to me the incongruency of certain people that are you know, one way on stage and then get off on stage and they're like an entirely different human being. It's, it's very uh, strange to me. Well, it's very, e look, it's human. It's very easy to have your speech worked out, to have your work worked out. It's not that easy to get yourself worked out. <laughs> and that's, okay, so... And I'm, we'll talk about this on Thursday night, by the way, and, and actually show you a graph in a fa fantastic way of making this um, easy to understand too. So thank you so much, Elan. Uh, you so and beautiful. Thank you for taking time out. I know you guys are in New York City, and thank you for taking time out of your day. It's a awesome. beautiful day. Uh, yes. So we'll see you Thursday. Mm -hmm. And for anyone else that's interested, if you want to private message me, uh, for more details about the event, please do. We have an event page we can share with you, and I hope to see as many of your smiling faces there. Sandra, can't wait to see you. Love you. Love you. Bye.
Bye. Bye.